hello friends in this video we are going to talk about the important points of the herbicide so first of all we will discuss about 2,4-D and you know that the 2,4-D is the most important herbicide that is used for the broadleaf weed control and uh, this is the one of the herbicide very important and uh, you can say that the chemical means of the weed control happen after the discovery of 2,4-D and the second fact, if we we'll, if, if we will talk, the site of action of glyphosate herbicide show the glyphosate herbicides actually inhibit the glutamine synthetase, and uh, this uh, glutamine synthetase is a very much uh, required for the nitrogen metabolism. You know, this uh, enzymes play a very important role in the nitrogen metabolism, and uh, you know the water hyacinth is uh, one of the aquatic weed, and you know this is the very much suitable habitat for the insect bat vectors those are transmitting disease like uh, dengue and chikungunya and malaria and this uh, aquatic weed is having some advantage of like uh, accumulation of heavy metals like lead cadmium and mercury so you can use it as a uh, bio remediation of some heavy metals from the water bodies but this is also having a disadvantage that because it is inhabiting and giving the shelter to the the vectors those are responsible for the dengue, chikungunya, and malaria. The selectivity of triazine is because of glutathione as transferase enzyme. And uh, after that, we will talk about a DNOC. And uh, the full form of DNOC is the 4,6-dinitroorthocrestol. And this is the first organic herbicide developed in 1932. And nowadays, uh, we are using metsulfuran methyl. And this is a very effective uh, broad leaf weed killer and uh, if you want to substitute uh, uh, 2,4-D so you can uh, use methyl instead of 2,4-D because this is the best substitute for the 2,4-D and you know the glyphosate this uh, is a systemic and translocated herbicide but this is non-selective herbicide it means that it can kill uh, all the vegetative part wherever it will be spread and paraquet and diquet these both are the contact non-selective herbicide these are two herbicides also non-selective herbicide but this is not non-systemic it means that this uh, herbicide will kill the portion of the weed where it will be in the touch of that okay after that we will discuss about the isoproteran you know the isoproteran is uh, most commonly used in the weed for the control of the failure is minor but right now what is happened because of the continuous use of the uh, isoproteron for the control of the Phyllis minor, nowadays we are finding that uh, Phyllis minor is reporting resistance toward this isoproteron. So, uh, Phyllis minor develop resistance toward the isoproteron. Orobanki and Dodder, these are the uh, parasitic weed and you know the in Orobanki and Dodder, chlorophyll is absent and Chlorophyll is present in Striga and Lorenthus. And if you want to control Cascuta, you need to apply non-selective herbicide like Paraquet with 20% uh, salt solution. And if you want to control Striga, then 2,4-D sodium salt is best example to control the Striga. And 2,4-D uh, is, you know, that this is a broad leaf weed killer. And if you are spraying the 2,4-D just vicinity of a field where the pulse is grown, then it will cause drifting effect on the pulse and if you talk about the sensitivity of oat so oat is very much sensitive to the triazines and sorghum is very much sensitive to the emajatha pyre and uh, you know the wheat and mustard most promising uh, mixed cropping uh, intercropping system and the uh, most promising herbicide if you want to use is the isoproteron you can use isoproteron even though if you are growing wheat with mustard now we'll talk about some of the terms those are related to the weed so weed management what is the weed management actually the weed management is terms that include prevention eradication and control of the weed so weed management is a broad term that include both uh, all prevention eradication and control what is suicidal germination this is very much important uh, and the best example is you know the striga needs some specific cost okay so Cotton is a false host of striga. If you are sowing the cotton crop, it will release the, some chemicals from the root like strigol and that will stimulate the germination of striga. Striga will underst understood that there is the host. 
so what will happen the germinating is triga seed and the germ tube will fail to uh, attach the host because the cotton is not real host for the striga so so what will happen after germination of the striga the striga will not find the suitable host so finally it will kill so this is actually called the suicidal germination you can use cotton as a false host to stimulate the striga to germinate now we will talk about the allopathy this is the phenomena of one plant having detrimental effect on another plant through the production of the chemical compound okay so if this one plant is releasing some chemical compound and that is affecting the growth and development arm side by the plant so this is this phenomena is called actually the allelopathy now we will talk about the style seed bed technique actually this is the technique where what we will do we will apply the pre irrigation in the field so what will happen the flushes of the weed will come immediately after the application of the irrigation and once the weed will emerge out then finally we will apply some chemical to kill the that flushes of the weed and this is actually called the stall seed bed technique for the weed management now we will talk about the blind hoeing and the, actually the blind hoeing is done after the sowing of the sugarcane and potato sugarcane and potato we insert tuber or stem in the soil so it will take some time to emerge from the soil so before the emergence we will control the weed by the hoeing process so this is actually called is blind hoeing and this is very much practiced in the sugarcane and as well as in the potato crop uh, many time we uh, found the term selectivity index so what is the selectivity index actually we want to test our herbicide is safe for the crop or not so for that purpose we need to find out the selectivity index of each herbicide so selectivity index is the race just a ratio of uh, maximum dose of that herbicide is tolerated by the crop divided by the minimum dose of that herbicide required to the control the weed so if the ratio is greater than 2 then we can say that the herbicide is safe herbicide so selectivity index higher is always desirable so these were all about the some important terms of the herbicides and facts of the Uh, weed control hope you enjoyed how is this video you may comment below the video and uh, if you are new then you can subscribe my channel